Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of uh, Freshly Pressed. Today we have with us John Creti. Fredki? I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. That's fine. You got it, man. You got it in the second try. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, welcome to the show, John. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. Awesome. Uh, I would love to know a bit about about yourself. What's your background? How you got into comics and and, and things like that? Sure. Um, well, background. Uh, let's go with comics first, and I'll go into background. That's a little easier to start with. Um, comics have just been around in my life uh, since I was a little kid. My uncle used to actually give me all his old comics, so he'd read them and just give them to me. So I ended up with like a massive collection of just his old stuff, you know. Um, so when I was young, it was all about like the different superheroes and all that. Um, you know, you would give, especially Spider-Man, that's like the one that attracted me the most as a kid. I think just there was something re really relatable about Peter Parker and all that. Nice. Um, but then as I got older and started getting into them more, you know, trying to find my own path with them, it was more like, you know, I'd be look, really attracted to like the horror stuff and just like the weird offbeat kind of comics, the more independent release stuff. Um, you know, I remember, you know, like Puppet Master and like, you know, just weird comic adaptations of like horror films yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I'd buy like the Hellraiser comics and yeah. you know at some point I found like all the reissues of EC comics like Tales from the Crypt and all that and um then you know from there you know I just branched off into like I just like all sorts of stuff now you know I'll read whatever as long as mostly indie stuff that like from the Kickstarter community and all that but you know that's that's where I'm at with comics um yeah just uh yeah that's amazing. The, uh, I for some reason I actually not it's not comics related, but I I get really attracted to screenplay adaptation into novels, so, so mm -hmm. like novelization of screenplays, and I don't know why. Like uh, for example, uh, uh, Alan Dean Foster has tons of them, right? Like he he's written yeah a, yeah <laughs> adaptations of Star Wars and 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 Chronicles of Riddick and and whatnot. But I, I I for some reason I get attracted to those a lot to to read. But I I totally get what you're saying with with the horror movies getting adapted into comics, right? Right, right. Those, those uh book adaptations they don't do that as much anymore, do they? Because I know it was really big in like the seventies and eighties. It was like they were all over the place, you know. Yeah, yeah. Actually. I was in the, uh, this is kind of off topic, but let's go, just go there anyways. I was in an antique store with my wife recently, um, a couple months ago, and I found a sequel to E.T. Like, I forget what, what it was all about, but I started, like, leafing through it, and they, they had all these weird names for the aliens and stuff. It was, it was, <laughs> it was wild, man, but it was, it was pretty funny to just leaf through that thing. Yeah, I, I, I think this time when I was clearing my, like, my old books, I, I found uh, an adaptation of X-Men um crawlers on the oh, okay. uh, on the wall i think it's it's called or something it's 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 like in it's a novelization of like a series of x-men comics oh wow Interesting. yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing so yeah you were you were getting into your background stuff yeah um i guess background just you know so the comics really came from my um my my uncle gave them to me but like my fascination with everything else like came from my dad you know because uh that's that's kind of where I wanted to create things because he was always doing little drawings and stuff and he was always showing me like wild movies when I was a kid like we'd be watching Creatures from the Black Lagoon or um Godzilla together or all that stuff and that that kind of like where my creativity or you know, just like my imagination ran wild with just all those like monster movies he would show me as a kid and sci-fi movies and all that. And um, it just kind of opened my world up to like just wanting to do that sort of thing, you know? Um, so yeah, I just started, I don't even know when I really started writing. It was mostly in school, you know, like like yeah. projects, doing short stories and everything. Um, and then my dad would give me ideas and I'd have to like write out a little short story based on what he asked me to write out. Um, and then from there, I just kept on, you know, I wanted to do screenwriting for a while, but um, when I moved to Los Angeles, uh, I actually met my, one of my best friends, Tobias. Um, we worked in the same cafe together and he was an artist and I was a writer. So like, we kind of just nice. decided, Hey, let's just get together and make comics together. And that's where it all started. Like in 2000, five or six around there 
Um, we started doing web comics together and then I just never stopped at that point. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's great to, uh, like, I was chatting with somebody very recently um, and he mentioned that uh, because of obviously pandemic and, you know, things are now so spread out and people collaborate around, around the globe. Like he misses mm -hmm. this real, like real life collaboration about like with, with comics, because the real magic happens when two people are in a room, just bouncing off ideas of each other. And, you know, like <laughs> just, right. just yeah. that, uh, that synergy no, I, with, with, with the right person. I 100% agree. Like I haven't had that experience since I lived with Tobias, like we actually had became roommates and we would just go at night to these cafes and I'd just be writing scripts. He'd be drawing the panels out and we'd just like those comics, like they were just like a, just a culmination of everything we loved. It was like, it was about a kids in a coffee shop, but um, you know, there was like, uh, there's, there was like a Kung Fu or karate um, school next door to it. And then like, there was a video store there. And then it's, we had just all sorts of characters in there. So we had like this like action movie star. It was, it was just like a culmination of everything. We would just throw everything out there together and he'd create these characters. And I'd be like, I think I can fit these guys in somewhere. And like, I'd just kind of write them into the script. And it was, it was really fun to work that way. But Absolutely. I haven't obviously had that in man, a long time, you know, <laughs> I do miss it. No, that's, that's awesome. And you know, like, um it, it's also you you like when, when you're writing for the first time there's also a lot of pop culture that plays back in your like at the back of your mind just to there's mm -hmm. a lot of inspiration from things that you like and uh, ideas come from there and it's really a mashup of all the things you like you've always liked you know so yeah 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 that's that's kind of what we did with those comics we we took um write what you know to heart and just like actually because we both worked in a coffee shop so we made a thing about a kids in a coffee shop and we just threw everything we were like watching all to, all the time together into it and just made this wild little uh fun comic about kids w living in los angeles that worked in a coffee shop and it just became a bigger thing for us nice it was cool nice i i remember doing a similar thing with one of my friends like really early early on and back in like it was like when we were in school and we were really young and you know we were trying to we independence day had just come out and we were always like big fans of both et and the goonies so we, we kind mm -hmm. of mixed all of that together put that in a pot and started we were like what if what if aliens came to the earth like independence day but they left one of them behind and there's an adventure of like this 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 kid trying to get that alien back on their planet and it, it goes into space right. and goes into all these crazy like uh, directions that that et didn't go into you know <laughs> you know the, 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 right like, right yeah yeah and you guys like made a comic out of it or yeah we did but it never it never like it never saw the light of it light of the day we just drew it and and you know we, we mm -hmm. just amused ourselves with it <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that actually reminds me like the first comic I ever did was I was like in fourth or fifth grade with my friend and we we came up with these wacky it was like a basically a like um a Marvel style like X-Men kind of thing they were it was called the Avengers of Action oh. um <laughs> and I, I remember all the characters we had this, this big beast guy named Lashore we had this guy that was like half cyborg, like right down his face. His name was like sci-fi, I think. <laughs> um, and we had this little the mad scientist with like a glass encased brain. Um, I remember that now. It's like, it's crazy. That, that was a long time ago. <laughs> like, probably like, probably like, yeah, like 35 years ago, I made that comic to my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first one. And for, for whatever reason, I was really into both Firestorm and Ghost Rider at that point of time. <laughs> well, mm. it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I don't know, like, there maybe Ghost Rider is probably one of my favorite characters of all time after, like, X-Men. So, yeah. Right, right. Ghost Rider's cool, man. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is the whole idea behind Ghost, Ghost Rider. I like it. I, I should actually pick up some anthologies of uh that character because i haven't i haven't read ghost rider in a very long time um yeah. but that that is a really cool character absolutely so yeah i give us what, what, a, a bit about your comic and uh what what your campaign is about like i'll just give you five minutes and you know just take the floor it's all yours yeah, yeah um so i have a new uh graphic novel that i'm putting out um it's called getting back to normal um the story is based 
I took a character that I wrote into another comic, um, but he was he was only on it for a couple of pages. Um, and I decided to explore him a little more because he was kind of an interesting guy. Um, his name is Raccoon. Um, he's a homeless man. Uh, he lives on the streets um, and he's kind of kind of a wild dude. Uh, I mean, he's lived on the streets most of his life. So he kind of um, he's a rough character, but um, the way he's written and the, the, the way you get to know him, you kind of you really should like him a lot. You know, he's he may be a little rough around the edges, but he's fun to be around, you know, because he's taking you places that you're basically not most likely not going to go by yourself. You know, he's kind of introducing you to the street world that he knows um, that mo most people just aren't going to go um, and uh, find themselves in the situations he's in. So essentially raccoon and this story is just out one night looking for food because he's hungry. Um, and you know, he's, he's homeless, so he's got to figure out how to get it. He doesn't have money. Um, but on his, while he's out looking, uh, he ends up finding a dead body and basically decides to bring justice to this stranger because otherwise this person's there, no one's going to look into this guy's death. You know, he's just another homeless guy like Raccoon. Um, so Raccoon basically takes it upon himself to um, start following the clues that he's finding and seek out the killer. Um, so this is, the, the problem here is Raccoon's like an unreliable narrator because he's kind of, he's a little out there. He, you know, he does do drugs, you know. Um, so sometimes he's um, very out there and you can't really trust all the information that he's finding. And he's basically picking up these clues, going one to the other, um, essentially not really even knowing if they connect to anything to do with this guy's death. Yeah. Um, and then the, the story just kind of keeps growing from there as he meets different characters, gets himself into weird situations. Um, and ultimately, it comes around full circle at the end. I won't, you know, give too much away about that, but it's a, it's a very existential kind of uh, story um, where, you know, like most good stories where like there might be an outside narrative going on, but it's really about Raccoon and like about himself and kind of figuring out who he is since, right. you know, he's not really Raccoon. That's just the name he's picked up, you know, over the time. So, yeah. and he, he's got, he got it because it's based on his wild personality. Um, so it's kind of like him kind of get into his roots and figuring out who was he before he was raccoon. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And I I, I read the preview as well and uh I, I really loved how Raccoon is actually quite likable <laughs> as, yeah. as a character. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Despite uh, I think his rough uh like his rough life, I think he's very likable and um uh, like uh, I, I obviously have to read more, but he, he looks very relatable in terms of like how he goes through the world and you know like mm -hmm. uh, goes about his life and things like that. Uh, there's also something like re a bit something endearing about him because uh, if you see like his interaction with 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 the guy who's fishing and you know those those kind of things, I actually really loved how how that interaction went and like he he, he doesn't come off as as. Uh, I know for for somebody who is who is maybe like upper middle class who's who's about who's who's there for ship for fishing and you know things like that 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 mm -hmm. person is maybe very privileged and and maybe has has good amount of money and for for him to like you know uh, look at a homeless man talk asking him for fish and things like that it, it, it could be pretty daunting so that 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 conversation felt very very natural to me like it felt very like realistic. So yeah, yeah, good. I, I, I'm, I'm, I do want to read more. You know, good, good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, yeah, because like with Raccoon, yeah, like I, I feel like he's a really hard sell because, you know, you kind of look at the character and it's not like you're like, do I really want to read like a 97 page comic about this guy? Um, but honestly, like I started this story as a short. It was only supposed to be like 10 pages long. Um, but like I just like I fell in love with the character. I wanted to write more and more of, of him, and I just wanted to keep going with him. So I feel like you know I hope that comes off on the page, you know, because like I, I like just enjoyed my time writing him so much that I felt like okay, I think people will go along for this longer ride with this guy because he's not 
you know, he's, he is like a likable, like kind of character. And I think like by the end of the comic, people will kind of like be really fascinated and um, kind of fall in love with the character a little bit, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, I, I think it'll be, I, I have a feeling that it's going to be good. <laughs> and I, 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 Thank do, you. I do recommend people, people uh, get behind this comic and, and get the campaign uh, funded, you know, as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> that's that's where all my hopes lie right now. <laughs> no, I, I would recommend it. Uh, at least based on the previews, it it looks pretty sweet. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No. Yeah, no. the artist. Um, just so I can give him props and everything. Um, the artist is Luigi uh, Chris Coalo. Um, he's uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his last name because I've only ever seen it on paper. I've never met Luigi, uh, but I've known him for a while now. We just through the internet. Um. He's from Italy, um, so I'm working with an uh, Italian artist on this. He's really fantastic with the black and white and just kind of bringing about the humanity and the characters, I think. Um, then my the letterer on the comic is Eduardo Camacho, and I've worked with him um, multiple comics throughout the years. Uh, he's just a really excellent letterer. He just kind of like, you know, it, he does what a letterer is supposed to do in, in the best way possible. Absolutely. No, lettering is, is really good. Uh, I think the dialogues flow really nicely. It, I was like, I, I have had this issue with a few indie comics that it was hard to follow the dialogue at times. But in this case, there was not, nothing like that. So it, it, the lettering was great, I think. Uh, we haven't got to a lot of sound effects yet, but uh, I, I'm sure that'll be fun as well to read. Right. Uh, and I've seen a lot of Luigi's work actually around like a lot of other indie comics and creators as well. So, like, Luigi's a fantastic artist. Really, really yeah, no, I like him. Um, yeah, the, I want to work with him again on another comic, definitely in the future. Uh, just, yeah, like he, just the way he brings everything out, um, you know, I, I definitely, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get together on another crime comic uh, at some point. Absolutely, absolutely. How, how, did, you, how did you come up with the, with the character of, uh, of Raccoon? What's what's well, your like a, yeah process of like writing these characters like your OCs? Raccoon, like I said, he was like a minor character in another comic. Um, but in that comic, he's like you probably wouldn't like him because it's like you see his bad side, you know. Like he's just on the page for a couple um or in the comic on a couple of pages, but uh, you, you your initial reaction from Raccoon would just be like, I don't know who this guy is, man, but I don't want to be by him, you know. Um, so I wanted to like see what I could do with a guy like that. And um, so with Raccoon, like I kind of changed him up a little bit in this one, because if I wrote him the way he was in that comic, I don't think he wouldn't. I don't know. He would be a harder, probably even harder sell, you know. Um, so with him, you kind of like this since this comic is about his past, um, it's you know, just kind of coming up with a character like him, where did he come from? So he lives in Reno, Nevada. Um, that's that's where I live right now. Um, and I just try to think of like, what's Reno all about? And like, what's the surrounding areas about? Where could it be possibly come from? And I kind of worked on him from from that angle. Like, Reno is pretty interesting because it's it's a city that's in the desert, you know, and like all the cities that surround Reno are far away. Like it's 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 really interesting. I mean, you were surrounded by mountains. You got Carson City past those mountains, but then all the other places in Reno. Like if you think about Las Vegas, that's what people know about Nevada. Yeah. Um, like Las Vegas is like I think seven hours away from Reno, so it's like way okay. down. And when you're traveling down to Vegas, you're just going through desert. And once in a while, you come up on a little town, and that's that's what Nevada is. It's like a bunch of like small plots and cities like just kind of staked out in the desert. So I'm just trying to think of like a character, where would a character, you know, who came from like maybe one of those small places, you know, kind of got lost in the shuffle and um, ended up in Reno, but like, you know, never got, got around, got along in life and just kind of, um, kind of spent his life on the streets and just doing drugs. Like where, you know, at this older point in his life, you know, where is he now, you know, who, who is this guy? Um, he was an interesting character to explore because also you don't want to be like exploitive of the character like that, you know, like I'm never making fun of Raccoon, like that's not the intention of this comic. The intention of the story is to tell his story and like see this human being underneath all the like wildness, you know, um, and like, you know, 
so that's like kind of the hard line there, you know, because like in, in I think, you know, a character like Raccoon, you could just exploit for laughs and just make fun of them. But that's not what this is about, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, with characters like him, also with the explorer, like when you're writing them, uh, I, I, you, you always start very simple and then you just kind of build them as they go. And like the more you write them in the rough draft, like the more of their character, their understanding of who they are um comes out that's how i do it i don't like writing like a ton beforehand like mm -hmm. i like to sketch an outline of like plot and character but then i just like to kind of let it kind of all build naturally and then fix all the mistakes later on in the second draft you know yeah 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 no that's great that's great cool uh there are a few questions i really love to ask everyone you know <laughs> for example okay. i think i will just get into it um what what are like the top five inspiration of yours in terms of any pop culture things like could be art could be music could be you know uh, movies or books or other comics or writers or, or anything but just just of five inspirations of yours sure um for comics it would be ec comics for sure it's the old um like i said tales from the crypt and all that like i always mention them because I, I really do love them i'm trying to collect all the dark horse uh hardcover books that they released of them I, i'm pretty close i've got my collection right over there and like i'm real close i think i need like less than 10 books to get them all so um i love those things i just love the storytelling and like you know the little the anthology nature of them and you know the quickness of the stories it helps me understanding um you know because i write pretty long sometimes but it, it kind of when i read those it helps me to understand the beats that i should be hitting to like kind of make to keep the story exciting and not just kind of go on with stuff um so easy comics um in general i think like films from the 1970s that's my favorite favorite era of movies um i just love the characterization like i think the 1970s films just had some of the best like uh characters like the way they wrote them back then um because a lot of them were more character oriented movies it wasn't really about plot or big events and stuff it was really kind of like when you watch taxi driver man it's like that's about travis bickle you know that, yeah, that's yeah. like who is this what this man you know and he, that the exploration of who he is like in movies like that like yeah. i really love that sort of filmmaking Absolutely. um even with yeah. the, your book, it looks like a lot of like a character study, isn't it? Like uh, a lot of the taxi driver is a character study about. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, it, I feel like these days you don't, they, they're out there. I'm not going to just like say they're not out there, but you just don't get a lot of movies like that style uh, yeah. where it's really focused on characters. Um, so I, I really, that, that I think those movies help me understand how to explore a character, you know? Um let's see top five so i've been reading lately i've been reading a lot of the old crime books from like the 1930s and 40s and 20s that like um a lot of the 1950s and 40s film noir movies were based on um and just those books are great um because i've actually started writing more more stories now um with my other comic book uh that i do home free every campaign i'm writing like a different they're supposed to be short stories, but they're almost not that length by the time I'm done with them. Uh, but the, those crime stories I really like because they were never like huge novel length. Like they're always like a hundred pages or less. And I really like that size of a story. So um, th those have been really inspiring for my writing lately. Just trying to keep it real concise and to the point, you know? Yeah. Um, let's see uh i guess other things that would just like generally anything horror from the 80s like i like all eras of horror stuff i'm just a horror freak so i love like yeah, the real yeah. gothic stuff yeah, from like yeah. universal and hammer studios but the the goopy gloppy 1980s ultra violent special effects and yeah. all that stuff um big fan of that stuff yeah um oh, funny you yeah, said I, we did i did like a john carpenter double feature last night just just watched two movies back to back it's so much fun oh nice which ones uh i watched uh they live and uh and assault on precinct 13 both both good movies nice. but not not in horror genre but still like still. no no those are great 
Yeah, I'm a John Carpenter freak. I actually got to see him perform live because you know how he, he released some uh, albums in the last few years? Yeah. Um, yeah. With his like son and like a band. And uh, I got to see him perform live in, when I was living up in Portland. And it was it was like a dream come true, man. It was like seeing John Carpenter do this synthesizer live in person. It's like, holy crap, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's amazing. I think music is what elevates his movies like to the next level as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, sorry, you were saying. Oh, and I, I actually just speaking about that, I would say like, um, you know, very specifically like uh, John Carpenter, and I would guess like people like Sergio Sergio Leone. You know, those guys. Like, I love writing to like really good movie scores. So, mm-hmm. like, that's definitely an inspiration because it keeps you kind of like in a in a good place. So. I would say yeah, some some good composers like that um, would definitely be another like uh, in, like um, one of my inspirations, you know. Absolutely, I also like love the the kind of horror movies where horror doesn't come from jump scares and more from like mm-hmm. the situation and the characters are in or like if they're going through something internally and things like that. For example, like Suspiria mm-hmm. is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Yeah. And, you know, even no, though I agree, yes, or the thing like the thing is about isolation as much as it is about horror, and you know, like, it, it, mm-hmm. and th- those those kind of movies are the ones I actually love the most in terms of horror, and not like, and nothing, no offense against conjuring, but you know, th- those kind of those are kind of horror movies I don't really love, right? Right, no, I got you. Um, I- I'm with you. Uh, I definitely like, you know, yeah. Yeah, like the isolation of the thing is like really kind of like one of the scariest aspects, you know, because they've got this thing happening to them where this alien creature is after them and they don't know who who's who and like there's that paranoia there, but it's also like they ha- they can't escape. There's nowhere to escape to. It's impossible. And that's like the scariest aspect because, you know, in, in some cases you'd be able to just jump in a car and drive away possibly, but no, not on that. There's just they're stuck and they have to figure it out for themselves, you know. Yeah, exactly. There's also I think uh, more recently, uh, mid like if if you've seen Midnight Mass and you know all all those kind of uh, have you seen Midnight Midnight Mass at all? Like the no the show it, it's really good. It it is kind of on like it is obviously very heavy on religious themes and you know um, uh, things about. Uh, faith and, and and things like that but it is also about like living in an isolated community how how that affects all of that and you know like uh the cultish behavior and things like that it's, it's really really okay yeah it's it's no not... that's that sounds interesting to me because like that what like how groups affect each other is always interesting to me and like how you know how ideas just kind of kind of rot the inside you know of, of like a group activity or something you know um yeah i do find that interesting um yeah so what what streaming service is that on midnight mass yeah it's on netflix netflix okay yeah. okay yeah. we just we just stopped using netflix because we were using my sister's password and that they just cracked down on that so <laughs> i don't have netflix anymore but if i do if i get it again i'll check it out for sure absolutely uh, i also like i kind of like to do circling between i like, like to circle between like different streaming services because there's so much content out there like it's just hard to watch yeah. everything right yeah i know i know it's like impossible like i i love like i love old stuff like there's so many movies for me to catch up on but i also want to pay attention to what's going on now because that's important you know but yeah. like yeah there's almost only so much time in the world to do all this stuff you know yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it's it's also hard because so because of so many streaming services, it's kind of becoming like cable with with maybe <laughs> because you have to subscribe to everything to watch, and then you have like next thing you know you have like five services you're paying like sixty dollars a month, <laughs> just mm-hmm. right. Services, you know, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. I guess the best thing about streaming though is you really can just like, okay, this month I'm going to do these guys. And then once the month's over, I'm going to cancel them. And then I can do this other thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you can't do it that way. It's just, you, you got to remember to cancel, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know? Exactly. Exactly. 
So I, I think, and the other problem is if your kids are hooked on to say like Disney Plus or <laughs> any of those things, like it's it's hard to cancel mm-hmm. those <laughs> even for mm-hmm. months. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Another uh, question that I usually ask is, what what kind of characters actually attract you? Like from like from other like movies or stories or you know uh like or like even while you're writing what like in in general like is there like some kind of specific characteristics of a character that you actually uh like to write yeah i i think um all my characters like most of the time there's, there's, I think a lot of writers kind of have themes that they kind of stick with. You know, they're just, you can't help it. They're always there. Um, like, uh, like if you, like, when I watched, during the pandemic, my wife and I were like, we're going to watch every single Martin Scorsese movie. So over the, over the year, we got through every single one. And, you know, you watching them, you really see the connection uh, between the films of like, oh, wow, these characters, like, He's attracted to a certain kind of character, sometimes a loner or somebody, you know, um, who, you know, just doesn't get, a, doesn't fit in with the world necessarily, you know, yeah. um, and that's kind of the Martin Scorsese character, even in, in like just everything he's done. And my characters, I guess they're, they're, they are kind of like that style, you know, they're people who are always trying to catch up to their past. Like there's something that they're kind of running away from. And they're, you know, either they're going to confront it or it's going to destroy them, mm. you know, and that's kind of where I go with my, my people. Um, so I kind of like, I, I kind of like always write a little darker. Um, I, I can't help it. It's just what I do. Um, they, they kind of, they're like, I do try, like, sometimes I do have happy endings, you know, and sometimes my unhappy endings are still like, there's like enough there for the characters to resolve mm-hmm. where it's still it's it's good for them you know but um but yeah usually that's that's my my person it's it's a person who is just kind of, something's happened in their past that they're either running away from or they're trying to figure out themselves or they're ignoring or whatever it is and it's just it's going to catch up to them and they've got to uh just it's going to maybe destroy them or it's maybe going to not but um <laughs> You know that's that's the that's the interest of the story, I guess. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. No, and and I absolutely love those kind of stories as well. There's like mm-hmm. I think I vividly remember like there's this sim- there's this movie called uh, Uncut Gems. Uh, with Alan. oh man, that movie is amazing. Amazing, right? Like it, it yeah. is something similar to what you described. Like he, Adam Sandler is that kind of character. So yeah, it's. Yeah, he's like a near do well, you know. That's that's kind of like his his character. He's like a. It's I always like call them like uh, they're kind of like Winnie the Poohs. You know what I mean? Like Winnie the Pooh is always like kind of going through life trying to do this thing, but he's getting into trouble constantly. You know, he can't. He just can't do it right. Like that's kind of what Adam Sandler's character is in that. He's, and it's he's like that movie was so stressful watching. I remember going to see that in theaters. <laughs> exactly, it's so intense, man. Those those, yeah. those directors are amazing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like I, I was like the whole the tension was like it was wrought with tension. The whole movie, like it's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you should check out the other film. They did another one with um, I forget the actor's name. It's uh the guy from Twilight. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, he, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, yeah, Robert something. Yeah, yeah. He, it's called Good Time. It uh, is- check it out. It's it's the same. Yeah, oh, you seen it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Okay, man, that movie is intense too. Those guys just know how to make you like stress. You know, <laughs> they're so good at it. Exactly. Awesome. Uh. Cool. And yeah, last, lastly, what, what kind of stories uh, in future should, should your readers expect from you? You know, that's, that's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, right now, uh, like I said, I have this other uh, series going called Home Free. Um, we've done three issues so far with my, uh, the artist, Michelle Lodge. Um, she's a fantastic artist, black and white. Um, it's another crime story. It's kind of, it's actually based in the same world as getting back to normal. 
Um, cause, uh, Sarah, the main character from home three is also from the same comic that raccoons from it's, uh, this other graphic novel me and Michelle did called the black wall. So we've kind of got this extended universe of crime stories going on, even, even though none of the uh, comics are connected. Um, but home freeze, uh, we got the last two issues coming out this year, um, issues four and five, uh, and then I have another comic, uh, graphic novel I'm working on with this artist. Anna, um, uh, it's a horror uh, graphic novel. It's another dark story. I can't help myself. Um, takes place during a plague. Uh, it's a. I can't wait to put that one up, but it's probably not going to be till next year because it's. I don't know. Three three Kickstarter campaigns in one year might be a, enough for me and all I can handle. You know, it's, it's a stressful a process. <laughs> um, and then from there on, I've got I've got a lot of scripts. Uh, that I'd like to produce, but they're just a little longer right now. So I've got some new ideas going um, to do. I want to do like um, kind of a vintage kind of project. Like I want to get somebody who does like the EC style art really well and do like graphic novels kind of, but smaller, maybe like 50 to 60 page stories. Mm -hmm. um, I have this like uh, idea I want to kind of start expanding on, but Expect some horror stuff and crime stuff from me. That's just what I do. Those are my favorite things to write and uh, make. Um, but for sure, Home Free, um, we're going to definitely put out the black wall at some point as a graphic novel because it was a web comic um, right. that we released. And then um, the other one is called The Long Death. And that's the uh, horror horror graphic novel I'm working on right now. Nice. Nice. That's That's so awesome. And looking forward to all of that. As well. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, last but not the least, I would love for you to pitch your comic again to everyone, and we'll we'll put the link in the description. But yeah, sure. Um, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so, getting back to normal. It's a ninety-seven page uh, graphic novel that's funding on Kickstarter right now. Um, it's uh going until March. No, April twenty eighth, not March twenty eighth. That's that's gone and done. Um. So uh, through that Kickstarter, if you're interested in um, even more uh, uh, the comics that I've done, you can get the Home Free series through there. You can get some of the books that I've written. Um, but Getting Back to Normal Self is uh, based on this character, Raccoon. He is uh, just a man who's lived on the streets his whole life, stumbles upon a dead body. He, uh, his whole plan is to bring that person justice and track down the uh, killer. Um, uh, but because Raccoon is an unreliable narrator, uh, the clues he finds might not necessarily be the clues he needs to be finding. And we'll see how the story wraps around and where he gets to and if he finds the killer uh, at the end. Uh, but that's getting back to normal. And like I said, it's going towards uh, funding until April 28th. Uh, lots of different cool stuff on there. Right now, if you go on um, and back right now, you can get like a glow in the dark sticker. Let me actually get that. I have it right here. <laughs> nice. Um, we have this this little uh, getting back to normal golden dark sticker with uh, raccoons mug on it. Um, nice. And you can also get uh, the back digitally. You can get the uh, first chapter of the Black Wall for uh, free. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's going on right now. That's awesome. Do back the campaign, folks. It's uh, it looks really good. Uh, I will back for sure. Cool. Well, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show, John. Really appreciate your time today. Well, thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate you having me on the show. Awesome. See you next time. Yeah, yeah, thank you.